What's up? Is this, is the, is the sound on? Mic check? Oh, put a new microphone on here, so that's why I'm wondering. Back workout. So I posted a picture up on Instagram yesterday. Um, it's actually gonna be two days ago for you guys now. And people are like, oh, what do you do for your back? How do you get your traps? So today is gonna be a bulging back workout. Cause that is pretty much what we want to incorporate. We want back, we have back thickness. We have lat width, so your back is comprised of so many different muscles that training it just by doing a pulling movement or pretty much you have two movements for the back, big movements. Pull down, so here, here pull to you is a row, and this is a pull down. So anytime you're doing a chin up, a, a pull up, pull up, chin up, a lat pull down, you're retracting the scapula, working a lot of lats, and working more lat width. Anytime we do a row movement, so pretend um, I am either underneath a bar or bent over horizontal with the ground doing a row movement to the back like bent over barbell rows, T-bar rows, um, horizontal supine rows. Any of those are going to be primarily back thickness. Now there's a lot of other smaller muscle groups we can start talking about do using cables and using some more isolations. Then you have the traps, trap three which goes down your back. Um, so there's a, lots of different movements, lots of different ways to train your back. The biggest thing that I've realized in training back in all these years, you have to have compound movements at the start, and then we finish off with some more isolation movements to work on weak points. Lat width has always been one of my weaknesses, because being 6'1", you have to have that, you have to create some illusion. You have to do this on shoulder day, you have to do this on back day. So you, I really need to concentrate on, on lat width and then lat, lat thickness. Now, the insertion, my insertions in my lats are pretty freaking high, which makes my, I have a long torso, makes my, I guess, torso core area look tighter, but it's a nightmare um, when stepping on stage and in, in terms of like a front lat spread or whatnot, um, the back just, it inserts super high. It's genetically, you know, how it is. But we're gonna do some things to try to work the lower lat area. Like I said, when we're talking about lat, lat width, um, there's some things, some exercises we try to do to get more lat width. So we're, this is going to be a workout that is, is a full back workout. It's going to incorporate a lot of different movements. Let's jump right into it. We're at Fitness Culture. Today I leave for New York for Gymshark. Um, I got to get this done. This has this workout has to be done. It should take you no longer than 60 minutes because that's what I have today. Guys, get used to doing pull-ups. This is your basic mass builder. Muscle endurance. So 15 reps, we're gonna be doing three sets of 15 reps on this. It's a little bit higher than you're used to. If you can't do all 15 reps, you have one of two different options. And I'm gonna show you those here after I do my first set of 15. Okay, biggest thing on pull-ups. The biggest thing I see people doing wrong Besides swinging up, they bring their arms in front of their body. So they're no longer, they're using a lot of biceps. Instead of keeping the elbows wide, what we're gonna wanna do, keep the elbows nice and wide as we pull up, and then finish the squeeze at the top and then back down. First thing we do with a pull up, right here. No matter what, it's right here. It's not pulling up your biceps, retracting the scapula. If you can't do all 15 reps here, follow me. This is your assisted pull-up machine. Now, if your gym has one of these, this is a great piece of machinery that if you can't do 15 pull-ups or if you can't do 10 pull-ups, hop over on here, use this machine. Also, sometimes I like doing pull-ups at the end of my workout when I'm not super fresh. Pull-ups, chin-ups, neutral grip, or if you're supersetting with another back exercise and you're fatiguing, this right here is, is your best friend. If you don't have one of these, Follow me. So if you don't have the assisted pull machine in your gym and you can't get 15 here, what I want you to do is either have a partner or a band. Most good gyms have bands in their gym. So if you have a partner, just do what you can and then have your partner grab your legs. So after you fail, knees go back and your partner would then would help your knees 
as you go up, giving you just enough to help you get to the top. I don't really like doing that though, because it starts getting weird because spotting your knees, they'll push your knees up, but that doesn't mean your whole body's going up. By using a band like this, you're gonna be feeling very, it's gonna be easy at first, and then it's gonna get harder and harder. And judging by how much help you need, that's going to, that's gonna let you know how thick of a band, that's gonna determine how thick of a band you need. This one is pretty dang thick, so it's gonna help me out a lot. As you can see here, this makes it a lot easier. So this would be if I could only get about five or so and needed to do 15, this band would be just about perfect. But you can see that it helps me throughout the entire movement. But I can do 15 pull-ups, so I have my next set. So rest, rest today. We're setting at 90 seconds between each set. Three sets, 15 reps. Two down, one more to go. when I should have 15. All right, 90 seconds, and we're on to our next exercise here. This is gonna be chest supported row. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the seated, seated chest supporting row. Again, we have our pull down, or our pull up in this case. That's working one set, like that's gonna be lat width, I'm trying to bring that. If we would have pulled down to our sternum, we're working that lower lat. The higher up, the more upper back we're working. Now, we're gonna go into a seated row, and depend on where we pull that to, we're working back thickness. Lower back thickness, upper back th thickness, a little bit of posterior delt there. So this is also a chest supported row. This is more of a chest supported T-bar row. This is a chest supported ISO row, meaning I can do each arm individually, and that's why I'm gonna do this one. Um, I switch it up, I go back and forth today. We're gonna stick here. And judging on where your hand is placed, you can work a variety of angles too. So I could go overhand grip up high, overhand grip low, which again is gonna pull closer to my midsection. This is gonna pull a little bit closer. All right, we got 15 on these. You wanna pick a weight that, you know, might, the first five reps might feel somewhat easy. Make sure you're getting a good squeeze. I find that the closer grip is a little bit easier than going narrow, than going wide. The narrow grip, I feel like I'm just I'm squeezing. I'm getting a little bit better of a of a of a grip maybe out here. I definitely feel a little bit weaker. So next set, we're gonna go wide. I'm gonna add a little bit of weight. 90 seconds. Come back for our second set of 15. Best set, best set. Who's gonna go on? We're gonna go up high here. Just stay in that mind muscle connection as it gets that eighth, ninth rep, and you're about halfway there and it's burning. Stay in it. That's where that growth's gonna happen. Here we go. Next up, I'm gonna go neutral grip on this, but if you have uh, a lat pull down in your gym, it's gonna be a, a supine grip lat pull down. I'm gonna show you guys, if you don't have that, which we don't right now, I'm gonna be using this awesome hammer strength machine with a little bit different of a grip variation. So typical hammer strength, our grip would be right here, up at the top on the handles. We're just gonna move them up to the actual the top of the machine. So from, from here, you know, I, I get a great stretch 
but I won't actually turn my grip into a neutral position. That just sets my shoulders up in a better position. Here, they're closed off. Here, they're open up. I'm able to set them back and down and pull to the sides here. Lean slightly forward if you can. And the reason we're leaning slightly forward, if we lean back here, we're gonna be pulling to a little bit different position, a little bit more upper chest. We start leaning forward and now we're pulling to our hip. You can engage a lot more of that lower lat. You just feel it. I feel my lat like I'm sipping on stage right now. And those lower lats. Are now. Better go for it though. I think I got that last 15 feet. Next up, our superset. We don't get a superset very often, but so this is our last thing for back before we move on to biceps. Well, this is a bat wing row. So the biggest thing we wanna do on this, this is a movement for our upper back. We're gonna be dumbbells placed neutral grip on our hand. We're gonna first squeeze our shoulder blades. So the scapula retracts. That's pretty much always the first movement in any kind of back exercise, whether it's a, a pull down or a row. Here, and then we're squeezing to the hips can involve lats, even a little bit of trap as we come up. I don't want people bringing them up here and just using the biceps. Retract the scapula, squeeze to the hips. Upper back, having a strong upper back is gonna come into play with bench pressing, back squatting, having a strong back is gonna offset. As we're benching, you have, to, you have to be able to set your lats when you bench press. Pretend I'm on, I'm flat on a bench, setting your back, your upper back. If you let it go loosey goosey, shoulders start concaving in. Now your bench press is gonna go to shit. So make sure you focus that squeeze first. We got 15 here, and then we're moving on to uh, our last movement. There's zero momentum on this because we're supporting our chest on here. So it's amazing how much momentum you get when you just do a bent over. That takes any of that momentum that's swinging out of it. So it's just all lat concentration, squeezing. We're supersetting this with our rope lat pullover. All right, main thing I want you guys concentrating here, make sure you're getting a good stretch. So this one, it's all about the stretch, the contraction there. So. Beginning, we're just gonna have elbows straight, elbows on either side of your ears. You can see my ears right in between. That right there, I'm already stretching my lats. This is our beginning movement. As we come up, we bring the rope down to our hip, chest comes up, and we squeeze. So it's gonna look like this. Back to the stretch. You can also do these with a straight bar, so your hands are gonna be wider and pulling straight down. I like the ropes. I switch it up actually, but the ropes I'm able to go a little bit past my body where the straight bar, then I'll be able to come to my hips. 90 seconds rest, back over to our bat wing row.
bad as hell. Get the detail, the thickness, the width. It has to be complete back workout. I think that's what we'll call this. Lat width and thickness workout. Higher reps today. Follow the program, believe in it. I got biceps now. It's the best part. My biceps are already kind of a little bit blown up. Not too bad, actually. A lot of that scapular retraction and staying with weight that I can handle is gonna make sure I'm using my back and not having to incorporate tons and tons of biceps. But since I did a little biceps, we're gonna finish those off. It's part of the program. Biceps right now, that'll be for another time though. That's it for this back workout. Time to go to New York. <laughs> 